Hello and welcome everyone. I am Andy Bryan from the Soul Pathway and today I have the pleasure and privilege to interview Fairy Dust 1111 and I met Fairy Dust 1111 on YouTube as I very much connected with her work and what it is that she does. Um, for those of you who know my work, I, I speak about the divine masculine and the feminine a lot and I came across her work as she was speaking about the divine masculine and feminine as well. And she shares some incredible work and also readings about connecting with the divine masculine and feminine within us. So today, within this interview, within this show, I'll be sharing her incredible journey and story that's led her to do the work that she does today. So um, before we get started, I'd love to find out more about yourself and what you do. Um, well, of course, thank you for the wonderful introduction. Thank you very much for that. Um, I use the modalities of tarot, numbers, animals, anything in a 3D experience to convey the messages that the spirit has for the divine ones, the collective, the connected, as well as other individuals. Yeah. So um, I just use those as just like a, a way of how people um, to illustrate the energies yeah. in which they may be in at the current moment and how they can use those energies to manifest and to connect with their divine self so that way they can manifest the life in which they desire. Fantastic and I absolutely love that because you know when it when it comes to connecting with our own divine energies whether it's the masculine or feminine within us it's it's really essential to in many ways bring that into harmony isn't it as we as we grow and develop so we can manifest because it is all about that union of self isn't it? I agree. And I just have to, um, the spirit is actually um, wanting me to actually go in what I mean by desire and with the higher self. Um, so just one thing that the spirit has given me throughout my journey is that um, the your higher self, your divine self, like when you first came here, you were stripped of your divinity and you um, stripped of your godhood to a sense. And so you were put here into limitations. And so part of your, your um, first part of your existence is connecting to your divine self, your highest self, that actually communes with the Holy Spirit, the priceless energy, um, the divine triangle, in which I call it, some people call it the Trinity. And yeah. with that, being able to know who you really are, so the real self is really the divine self, and connecting, when you always are connected. So Definitely. actually, I should say, align with your divine self and walking in your divine AKA like your, your um, destiny, your will, you know, your purpose in life. And once you find that out, connect with your divine self, that you'll be able to carry out that mission throughout the second part of your existence. Definitely, definitely. I can completely relate to that and, and, and you know, resonate with exactly what you're saying there. And in terms of, you know, it's for me, you know, from psychological standpoint and perspective, it's all, it's all about taking our ego out of play and allowing ourselves to connect with what our soul is calling within us because that is what the divine is trying to provide us isn't it in terms of connecting with our divine mission purpose and you know what it is that we're here to do in many ways you know so we're here to actually to speak about your journey and story and what led you to do the work that you do today and um in many ways we're going to talk about the journey of divine love aren't we you know because that in many ways is the the journey of masculine and feminine within because once we come into union with ourselves we allow ourselves to attract the union of of, of a counterpart that, that can help us in many ways we could say bring make us whole but the truth is we're already whole within ourselves it's just enhancing that level of completion in many ways you could say couldn't you so. yes um, and I have gotten in the habit as well um, of using, like, connecting to our, our higher self, our divine self, but we, we have always been connected, like your, your higher self, your divine self, your divinity, you've always been connected. However, like, um, the way how I always have envisioned it and the vision that the Spirit gives me, it's almost like an umbilical cord. And so you are always connected, but, you know, you can have energetic blockages in that um, connectivity and so therefore it can become very um, hard to receive the messages from your, your higher self, your divine self. And yeah. so that comes from being in a 3D experience. 
And so as you um, remove those energetic blockages um, and start to align with your higher self, um, yeah. there's never any disconnect. It's always like I have to get into alignment and that straight flow and remove those blockages so I can receive that, that information, that leadership, that guidance. And, um, and so with the actually coming into knowing what love is, unconditional love, um, which I say is like synonymous with full acceptance, and I call yeah. it the 333 energy. And um, it's about really fully first finding out who you are, yeah. aligning with your divine self, and your divine self will let you know who you are. And then once you find out who you are, and then you're able to walk that out. And that's full acceptance, full loving of oneself. And so therefore yeah. you will magnetize love towards you. And um, that's in, in this 3D experience altogether with anything, and then especially with your divine partner. Um, they will, it's almost like you're pulling them towards you, like you're pulling your, yourselves towards each other. Yeah. yeah. So you want me to go into more so like my personal experience with um. Well, we, we'll jump uh, into your journey in a second, really, because, um, you know, I speak about the soul pathway. And for me, I share the soul pathway because I believe there's a process to this in many ways. And like our spiritual journey isn't linear, as we know, but um, through understanding our soul path, we, we can in, in some ways bring a structure to our, to our human experiences, you know. So we'll jump into that in a minute. But, um, but yeah, going back to what you said, I think it's really interesting connecting with that divine love of who you are, which, um, which can be challenging at times, especially when we've gone through our own experiences when it comes to life itself. Um, because life always throws lessons at us, learnings at us. We're always we're always looking at how we can grow and evolve. And sometimes we experience, you know, many different situations when it comes to love, whether it's through family, through relationships, through work. It's all about connecting with with loving yourself in in all those different situations and moments, isn't it? Um, and that's not easy, is it? <laughs> so, so yeah. Now. let's jump into your journey then so if i was to ask you if you start your journey we, we look at the very start of your journey your old self before you you started on this uh, pathway to doing the work you do today in terms of you know assisting people connect with, to connect with their masculine and feminine aspects um and even before before you started your spiritual journey who who were you prior to that and what sort of environment you know, did you live in prior to that? Um, as most people, codependent, you know, like um, how the way we are raised, we're raised that, oh, I unconditionally love you. However, it's always conditions on the love. And so that's who I was before. And through this journey, through this process, I've learned about that um, when people say unconditional love, they really don't understand what unconditional love, uncontingental love is. And it's about um, dropping the human judgment and taking on divine judgment, you know. Um, and yeah. I, I use numbers a lot, so that's like the number five. And so through the karmic burning, we we're able to learn about what divine judgment is, full acceptance, yeah. and what um, unconditional love is. And so this has been a process. So um, before the, the older me, I guess you would say, like the suppressed me, yeah. very like codependent just like everybody else. Um, I always had an aspect of myself that, um, I guess you would say they were, people were like, oh, why are your head? Your head is always in the clouds. Your head is always in the clouds. You need to have more, quote unquote, common sense to be more common. And um, so yeah. I used to have to battle within myself. Like, okay, this is common. This is what I should be. However, I feel like I should be this way. This is how I really feel. And so what ended up happening, uh, happening was like a um, passive-aggressive type of energy within myself. That it was yeah. like a conflict, um, being that I had a con conflict within myself, that when um, I would have relationships, and this is all types of relationships, that yeah. I would say, yeah, okay. But then I found myself doing something completely opposite. And then I um, looked up. And I'm like, how did I end up doing this or saying this or whatever? It's because yeah. I, that's how I really felt. Like the real me, the divine yeah. me was really 
from taking over, and it was like a constant conflict until after, you know, um, I would say like the epiphany, the tower moment, if you will, if you know about tarot. Yeah. When it came, yeah. but I had like a series of little epiphany moments, and then it led up to the, the big one, and then um, yeah. it was like a span over a couple months, and that's when I met my divine master. I've had two, two, uh, I'm sorry, two, two soulmates, <laughs> tongue tied, yeah. uh, two soulmates throughout my entire three D existence, and yeah. so um, at the time when I met my divine masculine, I was with my my second soulmate. And yeah. but it's trusting him. I was like, oh my gosh, I know him. And it was that spark. Like <laughs> like you know how you put the lighter and you spark it? Yeah. Like that spark. I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. If we if right. we go back a bit though, like, if, if we go back a bit before we um before we jump too far in, before we jump too far into your journey and story, I wanted to jump back a bit. Um because we spoke about your old self a little bit, but I wanted to know what what your experiences were like there. So, did you did you feel like um, you had some some karmic lessons, or you were you were you know playing out life in you know through karmic experiences in terms of love before you even embraced yeah, definitely. what it was? Um, definitely, you know, some uh, karmic experiences. Like uh, I have to also mention that you know how people have this. The mindset of karma, karma is negative. Karma, like it's going to come yeah. get you like it's the boogeyman or something. But karma yeah. is no different than this. like a pendulum to swing from one end to the next. It's like it, it's the teacher. On my, actually, on my Definitely. channel, I have a video entitled The Holy Spirit, The Crisis Energy, and Karma. They're all one and the same. They're teachers, they're purifiers. And so through yeah. these different ex um, experiences in my TV existence, that it brought me to, it brought me full circle to my divine self. So yeah. initially, stepping from my divinity to here, going mm -hmm. through like this karmic burning, this karmic cycle, now it led me back to my divine self, connecting, what well, more yeah. so aligning with my divine self. And so, yes, I definitely had um, karmic experiences. It may have seemed yeah. like misfortune, quote unquote. However, it was nothing but um, learning yeah. experience. So that can yeah, align, definitely. you know, clear. It's like well, fire. Always, fire, I, fire. Yeah, well, I, I always say with these things that, that um, each and every experience is crafting us into the person we are meant to be or, 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 or growing into in many ways. So no matter whether it's the, the deep, dark, painful experiences that are really quite bad at times, you know, we, we, we have all gone through them, you know, and, and then we've got those blissful experiences. They are all teaching us lessons. And if we only learn what the lessons are in these experiences, then we can connect with our divine self in many ways and, and really become at one because we've got shadow and light. You know, we could, you know, we could say that the karma or the karmic experiences are part of the shadow, but we can't embrace the light without that shadow, can we? So as I always say, um, so if we, we speak about your moment of, of being, you know, people saying your head's in the cloud in many ways, because, you know, that's in many ways your, where your soul was awakening. Your soul was awakening and yet you, you felt disconnected, possibly felt disconnected from, from those others that, that felt you, were, you weren't on the same path or you're slightly you know, crazy, so to speak. You know, what was that like and how did you shift your mentality into connecting what was with what was right and true for you in those moments. Um, it also called me like Billy or silly or something like that. Um, but I've always had that since, let me see, the first, um, actually pretty much all that I can remember, even from like being from a child, even before, especially more so when I got into school, like um, just being, feeling different, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I feel fully like accepted and that I had to do things to appease others, to be accepted. And yeah. so that was like a continual motif throughout my life until after. Yeah. Like now it's not so much a big deal. That's how I can tell that I'm aligning more so. And yeah. it's becoming, I'm becoming more comfortable with my divinity. You know, other people are threatened by the divine ones, you know, the collective, the mm -hmm. connected. Uh, because of their un uniqueness, 
and um, this puts them at dis-ease on an energetic level. And so therefore they try to suppress, try to suffocate their, yeah. their voice, their creativity, et cetera. And so I just had to realize oh. that and it was like a veil that was lifted over my eyes. And so um, mm -hmm. I can remember several different spiritual experiences. The, the, um, a real pivotal one in which I really distinctly remember is last year in August um, when we had that solar eclipse. I remember that. It was like a real <laughs> rare one. Yeah, it was like up once in hundred years. Or and you know, um, so I was down with the ascension flu for three days. And through that, you know, I, I felt like I, I was like, oh, maybe I should take some medicine. And then the spirit was saying, no, push past the pain because there was a message, message in the pain. And so many spiritual activations happened throughout that time. And I think that was a real... Um, I knocked down a whole lot of barriers when Definitely. that um, experience happened you know, that those three days. You know, I think what's interesting about those experiences, you know, of people like, you know, knocking the divine ones in, in many ways, or because we're all divine in many ways, aren't we? But it's it's only them sort of sort of still living through the programmed world, the matrix, in some ways we could say, um, and. It's it's who we are that is shifting, you know, shifting the paradigm, shifting the consciousness, moving away from old paradigm to a new way of being, where we're all much more connected. And I think in many ways that's that's what what has been and what will be our role as we move forward. Um, but if I if I ask you about that tower moment, because I'd imagine it was probably around that time in August. Um, how did that tower fall down for you, and what 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 was the greatest learning for you in those experiences? It's like um, the way how I've always experienced it is like I may have um, like um, spiritual experiences and then the manifestations will ground later. Like people would probably say that um, from the outside looking, looking in, they would say, oh, when your house burned down, um, actually burned down uh, on the blue full moon, um, January 31st. That was the tower yeah. moment. But no, the things that happened previous to that on a spiritual plane that I could, that I knew of mm -hmm. um, happened back then, back in August. However, the manifestations of them were showing up later throughout mm -hmm. um, the couple, several months after that. And so... Um, I, I, it's sort of it's sort of hard to really explain like the the tower moment because it it although it it, it um the spiritual experiences were the tower moment the manifest manifestations didn't come until later yeah. so um, it's like the grounding of that change didn't happen until later I'm still living in that manifestation of the tower moment yeah so, I understand so I'm still transforming. Through the, it was like a portal that was open. Yeah. Through that, um, that portal, okay, it's open, but um, as I go through my 3D experience, I'm experiencing different manifestations of that portal being open. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Oh, oh it does. It does. I mean, I mean, because cause waves of waves of energy come through that that, that in 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 many ways they rock us. It rocks us, doesn't it? But you know that I find that tower is is very much the the dark night of the soul in many ways, and it's interesting. You know, I just pictured in my mind of of sadly your house um, burning down, and uh, I pictured a tarot card in the moment as well, where you've got the you've got literally the tower on fire. You know, in, in some of the decks, yeah, exactly. it's like that physical dis it's just paralleled, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But thank God, you know, everybody was okay, but. Um, you know, I just, uh, it was actually like a blessing in disguise. That's what, you know, in the biblical text, it, it actually states that all things work together for those who love God or the divine source, and they're called according to the divine source, you know, yeah. stepping into their divinity. And so I knew I was on a path. I did not know, you know, where exactly each, like, little step was going to lead me, but I knew the overall outcome. And so... Um, you know, you don't have to know each step along the way. The spirit will lead you to go down a certain path if you are fully in alignment with your with your um, spirit, with the spirit. Definitely. So all you got to know is just where you 
pretty much the destination. And then no different than your GPS. You don't know every single turn by heart, but you follow that GPS yeah. because the GPS tells you and it's the same thing with spirit. And so I'm yeah. still I'm still treading on. <laughs> I know the overall outcome, but I don't know each and every step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One day at a time though, isn't it? It's always one day at a time. And that's that's yeah. a good thing. You know, being grounded, being present. You know, once we're grounded, we're present and we are in essence really connecting with who we are then our soul pathway will unfold naturally for us you know and we've got to just trust and you know and allow that process to to go go forth you know in many ways um if, if i if i go to towards your you know what i i regard as our phase of transcendence where we grow and evolve spiritually and emotionally to become you know you know who we're meant to be as i said earlier and I wanted to go back to your soulmate experiences and, and what your lessons and learnings were there in terms of your growth and, and possibly your ascension at the same time. Um, like some, share some instances, uh, like epiphany moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there could be epiphanies, or, or what? What were your greater learnings through through those experiences of love as you, as we ascend towards that divine love? I really learned about unconditional love. You know, before I was thinking, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a loving person. I would always hear that. However, like I remember when my first soulmate, uh, he, he he told me several times, he was like, I need you to be my friend. So I was like, I am your friend. Duh, I'm your girlfriend. What are you talking about? And then yeah. it wasn't until I got to my second soulmate that I was like, oh, I understand what he means by that. Mm. You know, and then even further on, that when you know I got in, in introduced to my my twin flame, that I mm-hmm. fully, really even understood it even to a more deeper magnitude than even what he was even saying at that moment. Yeah. And that was one that really stuck out to me, um, just like as they say, a score a score sum. Yeah. And then with my second soulmate, um, I really learned about once again <laughs> the the continued message of unconditional love. As I after I met my my twin flame, and then being in between the the two, and you know, as I was transitioning, it was like um, letting go of the second soulmate connection. Well, not really connection, but relationship in a three D sense. Like, yeah. and then um, aligning with my twin. I was, you know, you on a higher spiritual plane. You are always like together you actually are designedly you know in union on the spiritual plane but in the yeah. 3d experience and learning different things with um going in between the bridging i would say or the transitioning from yeah. one um relationship or connection in the physical to the next yeah and that was a very pivotal time um it was <laughs> it was very very intense very intense and it's, it always is, isn't it? It always is. Yeah. Um, but they're beautiful yeah. experiences, and we wouldn't change them for the world, would we? Even even with the um, the, the beautiful loving energy and the, and some of the sadness that comes with with these experiences as well, as we know. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like um, it was. It was really. It's hard to sort of kind of put it into words because um, it's like letting go of something to have something better and sometimes you like it was it was overdue so therefore those power moments had to come otherwise i wouldn't have done it you know i wouldn't have let go of the soulmate connection i would just stay there in a way suffering and suppressing who i really um who i really was and if it wasn't i had a question for you here i just had a question for you here with with regards to your soulmates we, we know you know, through through what I've learned through twi- about twin flame relationships and also soulmate relationships. But uh, what I wanted to ask you about some of the soulmate experiences you went through, did it allow you to, you know, connect the masculine and feminine within yourself? Because we know that the twin flame is, is all about that divine union of masculine and feminine. But more importantly, you know, from a soulmate perspective, did it help you to bring out the masculine within you? as well as balance out that feminine a bit more? Yeah, especially with my second soulmate, um, it, it was like with that passive aggressive type of energy, uh, what, I, what I was in, that um, mm-hmm. it's like my with my second soulmate, he really ignited, 
like the fire in me, meaning like um, I have a lot of fire in my chart, but I would try to suppress it. You know, it's people pleasing. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, yeah. activating for the masculine type of energy uh, within me yeah. and for being a little more aggressive and being able to step into that type of masculine energy to say, this is this is who I am, this is how I feel, and I'm not going to back down. And so yeah. um, through the, the the relationship lasted for like about 10 years. Yeah. And um, and more so, especially when I got to, to when I met my, my twin, and mm -hmm. then it really started to kick up extra notch. Uh, extra notch. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah. <laughs> I can go on and on and on about it. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how much will actually bore people. Or how much will be like, oh, okay. Well, I think it, the reason why I like to talk about this stuff is is because I personally believe through connecting with people, speaking with people about all these different relationships and what experiences they're going through, that um, in many ways, some people don't realize that, that there is this imbalance of masculine and feminine. And I, and I feel that's where, that's where a lot of the epiphanies lie, because... Much like yourself, I was, I was very much connected with my inner feminine. I was actually connected with my inner feminine. I got a lot of fire in my astrology chart as well. I got the Sun, Moon, Mars, and Mercury all in Leo. You know, massive fire energy there, and, and thinking that that was suppressed within me, and that I needed to to reconnect with that. So my feminine was 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 dominant, and my masculine needed to come out because it was suppressed, but how do we go about balancing that? And that was really my next question. How did you, how did you bring about that balance to allow your masculine to really come into play in order for you to truly step up and be yourself? You know? it, uh, it started um, gradually, really specifically with my second soulmate. Um, maybe towards, the, it started more so towards the year before I met my, my twin. But I did have like um, another spiritual activation, and I would usually to avoid arguments or to avoid disagreements. I just like okay. However, I still with that passive aggressive energy and balance of the masculine and feminine, that I would still end up end up not completely doing what I said, what what I agreed to because I really didn't want to. And yeah. so um, then it got to the point where I was just like, okay, I really don't want to, and then it will be an argument, and then eventually. Instead of just sitting there, a lot of times I'll fire and they're firing back. And then, you know how they have, like, where they say that, oh, a woman, you know, you're too, you're too masculine, you're too manly. And especially now um, in, in my culture, I am of African-American descent, that they'll yeah. say, well, the black woman is, you know, irate. That's why she don't have a relationship and blah, blase, mm -hmm. blase. And so yeah. that's a lot of what my... Um, we we'll say, um, what is it, rebellious or the Jezebel spirit. And so yeah. it, initially it would um, cause me to go back into myself, back into that feminine type of energy. But, you know, through, it, I, I just couldn't ignore it, you know. Um, and then yeah. I had to, I had to step into that fire energy, especially when I met my, my, um, my twin flame. Can I just um, add something here? Because, I just wanted to add something here because, you know, what you said I think is really important because because in terms of the masculine, I think it's not the fact that anybody's, any woman is, is more connected with the masculine. I think it's more so that the masculine is, is being misrepresented so that, we, so that you as women might be expressing more of the masculine, but not in that healthy masculine sense, but, but maybe in, in that, that to toxic masculinity that we've been learned through we've learned through society if that makes sense you know yeah because even um with ma masculine so quote unquote like men you do have a certain amount of suppression of their masculine energy too like how you're yeah. saying the well-balanced ma masculine energy not like yeah. oh i gotta be butch i gotta be this i gotta be that you know yeah. what is the face of masculine what is the face of feminine yeah. It, it will naturally balance out if we lose the human, the human judgment, you know, where we don't have to uphold a certain type of look or a certain type of um, persona for either or, just be. 
So let me ask you a question now then. So so how did um, allowing your fire to come out and burn, you know, in, in, a, in a good way and healthy way, allow you to connect with divine love within yourself and in your twin flame? Well, I have this analogy of a jack-in-the-box. And so, like, you know, with the jack-in-the-box, you have that little wind-up on the side, and so you're winding and winding, so the pressure is building and building. And then when the yeah. jack comes out, the spring bounces, like, you know, without any kind of control. And then it starts to settle down, and then, you know, the jack is just sitting there. And so yeah. it, was, it seemed like it was in order for to really break through that barrier and the opposing force is that I had to come like full force. And it, it really happened more so um, towards the end of, of last year. And, um, and what I was really doing full force, I couldn't, it was just like, I had to go for it. And yeah. so um, with that being said, is that, it, it was it was no control with it. I had to yeah. allow that fire to fully burn, and it may even seem like it was uncontrollably burning, yeah. but then it started to settle. And then when that settlement started to come of the fire, you know, the dying down of the fire, not like raging fire, but dying yeah. down of the fire, like it's soothing, it's warm, it's comfortable, it's cozy, that I was yeah. able to really see yeah. and feel the divine source speaking to me and showing me the real face of love, love it. and how love to it. really, and it's still showing me, it's a continual process. You know, when mm. you, when you um, think that you have found out the truth, like, yeah, I'm living completely in the truth, that <laughs> the spirit will bring your the mirror back around to you and be like, oh, that little something left, you gotta, mm. gotta clean up a little bit. And so it's been a continual process yeah. of like purging and you know all of that that stuff that's been buried and suppressed yeah and that's for you know for all of us we all have that that um, sense of, of, of settlement within us and so we go through these different stages of karma Definitely. burning we yeah burn all of that but we do in in many ways you know I, I believe our journey is always ascending always growing always reaching up higher levels of consciousness you could say but I do believe we get to stages on our journey where we have become whole within ourselves or we, we feel that wholeness, where we've become at one with our masculine and feminine in some respects. You know, though we still know we've we've got, you know, a way to go, but but we've we've reached some level of union. Would you feel like you've you've connected that with that within yourself and you're you're ascending to to a higher level of consciousness within that now? I feel like um, I'm really, I'm like almost there. I'm like this much. <laughs> to be completely honest, <laughs> like, I'm like on the precipice. I'm right on the cliff of fully, yeah. you know, being connected. And, you know, being in a 3D experience, you always will have the, that resistance. You always have that, um, that uh, force in which you would be, the different things you have to go um, through. And what I mean, what I really see, I see different levels. It's like almost like an obstacle course. You complete the obstacle course, but now you go to the next round. Uh, what yeah. is that game called? Like Gladiator or something, where you go yeah. through the first round. Okay, now you pass that first round. Now it's time to go to the next yeah. round. So yeah. patient. But within, like, I guess I would say I'm past the first couple rounds, and I'm about to yeah. um, go to the next round, if yeah. that makes sense. No, I, I can completely relate to that because, you know, where I am in my life at the moment, I feel like, um, you know, I've, these last three or four months, I feel like I've really connected to my inner fire, stood in my truth and allowed myself to share that. That for me has been the masculine energy, masculine energy coming out. So it's allowed my feminine to come into balance. So in many ways, I do feel in, in some respects I've, I have come into union in who I am. Definitely not complete. Definitely not <laughs> the the uh, complete article, so to speak. But but I know um I know that that in some ways I'm I'm content with that. If that makes sense, you know, and that's what I was trying yeah, to definitely. get at with you yourself. You know, good. <laughs> so what would you say the greatest learning is for people to to uh, bring into union the masculine and the feminine within them, in themselves, so they can connect with that divine love. Yeah, you know, um, when you have, I have like a 
series of, of videos, but um, when you have the unification within yourself with the masculine and the feminine connected to the, you know, the divine source, I call it like the divine triangle. And then when that happens with your counterpart or either your twin, then you guys come together and it's like a divine star. And so it, it almost, if for visual sake, it almost looks like um, the Star of David. And so you come together and when you consummate and use your, you know, um, connecting with the sexual energy and two unified beings come together um, and consummate, it's like DNA activation. And yeah. it's just like a whole nother, I almost see like a medallion that comes together to form one whole new medallion. And while you may be yeah. a whole medallion on your own, um, but when you come together with the other medallion, it's like mm -hmm. a whole new, like the third energy that is created. And um, yeah. that's where I feel like I'm on the press of stuff. And then together, mm -hmm. you know, you guys will continue in the ministry of unification and the ministry of helping other divine souls and others. And um, so they can unify within themselves with the divine source. And it's a beautiful Definitely. thing. Um, it feels, I, I actually feel really happy right now. It, I feel it's a beautiful thing anyway, you know, I completely relate, it's, it's nothing more beautiful than, um, you know, connecting with our divine love, you know, being at union with ourselves and and then serving that greater mission and purpose um, for those people who are going to receive the benefits of, of, of what we have to offer to the world in terms of raising consciousness, awareness, you know, shifting from old paradigms to new and and really allowing others to step into their power and strength because that's what I love. That's what I think is truly beautiful. It's amazing, isn't it? So. I know. That's why I'm so passionate about what I, what I do. So where can we find out more about yourself, your work, what you do, and uh, also your YouTube channel? Um, so the YouTube channel is Fairy Dust 1111. And I didn't think it would be this name. <laughs> I actually Sorry. asked God, uh, what, what shall I name it? And through a dream, this is what came, came about, that name. And so initially it started off as just using like the tarot to um, illustrate and convey the messages that the spirit had at the mm -hmm. specific time for a specific wave or several waves. And sometimes even, um, like through the channel messages that may be individual scenario not really scenarios, but um energies that come through that it's the messages I have to convey to to the individuals. But it's really honestly it's it's a way of how to just connect with the spirit. Regardless if you use astrology, if you use numbers, if you use tarot, these are just divination tools. Um yeah. so that we can we as three D beings can fully um understand the divine source and, and the energies in which we are in, and so um, that's what I do uh, on my on my channel using like tarot and some astrology. But I also am branching out more so into teaching. So I do mm -hmm. teach as much as I possibly can in those tarot readings because I know that more people are going to click on that. <laughs> yeah. And if that's the way how they will learn, then I will continue to do it that way. However, I am branching out to starting to do like the straight teaching um, videos, mm -hmm. and manifestation, how you step into your divine power and start to manifest. And that's part of mm -hmm. our journey. If we can't transcend the 3D experience, what power do we have? What divinity do we have? You know, if we are victims to our 3D circumstance, instead of making 3D circumstance, you know, exactly. lay under our feet, we transcend yeah. it. And what I do is, anyway, I'll, as always, I will put the links uh, below the video on YouTube, and uh, I'll also have links for anybody that's connecting with the video on Facebook because you know my videos are always uploaded to Facebook and YouTube. And uh, what I will say is, thank you all for listening. Thank you for sharing your 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 journey and story. And one last question is: uh, Is there anything else that you feel guided in many ways to share uh, with our viewers? You know what they can do in order to step into divine love. What was that last part? What can, what can they do? To step in divine love, into divine love. It's like a, a conscious and unconscious type of, of choice. Because sometimes you can be led by your spirit and by the spirit to actually take actions in which you, your 3D 
conscious mind wouldn't do. And so um, to activate that more so, I would say take conscious steps to actually um, work on that activation within yourself. And so you are infinite. You are, you know, you have the, the, um, the infinite power and energy through aligning with your divine self that directly aligns and communes with the divine source. So therefore, you always have that, that infinite and abundant amount of energy and information. And so work on ways consciously to align, to continue to align with your higher self because you will always have that illumination on where to go. And um, don't yeah. let anybody tell you who you are. You know, <laughs> I don't care who they yeah. are. Yeah. It could be even a reader. It doesn't matter. If, you know, if the divine Definitely. show you who you are, you walk in that truth. You ask the divine to give you that strength to walk Definitely. in what Definitely. I do that every day. You know, wake up no, in the morning it. and show gratitude. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, ask, what shall I do? Or... How shall I handle the situation? Help me, you know. Very true. Yeah. Like, we shall. Like, again, same same with my work. You know, my my coaching and my mentoring is, you know, a lot of people, you know, coach people to find the answers, you know, or give people the answers to, to what there is, is they're trying to learn. And for me, my mentoring is all about helping people find answers within themselves because I can't give anybody the answers unless, they look within themselves, and that's what my role is as well. So it's essential, isn't it, on our on our journey to connect within, connect with the divine, and and allow that to guide us. You know, so. I agree. I thank you so much for having me on your show. It's a great honor, and I yeah. don't really do Facebook, but however, for the divine ones, I will. <laughs> um, yes, my YouTube channel. Um, I am more active on like Instagram. I do have a Twitter, and I just recently started a Patreon page. And I just want to, you know, help individuals just align with their power. And that's I really have always been passionate about that. Although, like as far as helping individuals, but you know, um, more so now I have ways of really to tools to really help them you know, align with their divine self and really, really fulfill their divine purpose. And I thank you guys so much for listening. Well, again, thank you for sharing your journey and story and all of your links will be below the video. So any of you who are watching this either on Facebook or, or YouTube, you can find all the links to um, Fairy Dust 1111's channels uh, below. And I will say thank you again for listening and I'll share another interview and uh, Soul Pathway story with you again soon. With that, I will say bye for now.